Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Gardner, Associate Professor of Music Education at the Pennsylvania State University. I'd like to talk to you about teaching eclectic styles of music in your instrumental ensembles. Bands and orchestras have a long history in our culture, uh, both in performance and in our music education systems in our schools. One of the benefits of this long history is we have a large repertoire of mu uh, music to perform, a uh, classic repertoire by great composers, often referred to as the canon. Uh, we are, we the, teach uh, band and orchestra in the schools are very proud of this tradition. However, we should acknowledge that the, the format and the repertoire can have a, a limiting experience on our students. Uh, in other words, learning uh, only music, only classical music in the band and orchestra formats uh, can give one type of experience for our students. Uh, learning varied styles of music within this format uh, can enhance students' musical understanding and their technical abilities as well. So I'd like to go through several aspects of teaching eclectic styles of music to band and orchestra students that can be very beneficial for them. First of all, remember that all styles of music are taught within a genre and that musicians can learn to be multi-musical. In other words, they can learn to perform in different styles of music on the same instrument. Uh, we always learn the performance practices within a genre and the rules that are followed within that genre. Um, and students uh, can learn different techniques related to each genre so that they can learn a wider variety of techniques and they can also learn different skills such as composing or improvising within those genres. Learning about a musical genre is also learning about a musical culture. Uh, the musical genres are understood by those who perform them and observe them and learning a new style brings a whole other set of cultural rules that go along with it. Um, this can allow students to view concepts and issues from a different perspective that they're normally used to. Uh, they can also learn styles that they haven't been familiar with in the past, uh, which can uh, enhance their musical learning. Authenticity and performance is a big issue when learning other styles of music. Uh, teachers are often not trained in other styles of music and don't always feel confident in teaching about them. And this concern is a good one because we do want to teach the music as authentically as possible. However, be careful, authenticity is not a black and white issue. Authenticity exists on a continuum. Therefore, we should strive to be as authentic as possible, but it's not always possible to be perfectly authentic. For example, if you're performing jazz music in a high school at eight o'clock in the morning in a school, you're not technically being totally authentic. Um, also, playing jazz music on stringed instruments is a little inauthentic, but still can be done very authentically anyway. Learning other styles of music can in enhance an active and individual participation. The traditional format of band and orchestra is often led by a conductor uh, who dictates the information to the students. However, other styles of music can be more interactive, and students can make decisions uh, individually as they're learning about it. So if we want our students to be more independent as musicians and do things with uh, their musical skills later on in life, uh, we should explore some formats that encourage them to make these decisions on their own and uh, to interact with each other. Teachers, uh, in order to do this, need to abandon their expert role and be willing to learn along with the students as you're exploring different styles of music. But that can be very beneficial for us teachers as well. Uh, also, we should try to uh, have our students interact with guest performers who are experts in these styles of music and they uh, can make connections with the students that can go way, well beyond the classroom. I'd like to talk about the difference between rehearsing and jamming. Uh, the concept of rehearsal within classical music um, is a very formal one, uh, but other styles of music, uh, this concept is different. Uh, the idea of jamming. It's a colloquial term, but it represents a little different format of, learn of performing music and rehearsing music. Uh, it's um, uh, less formal uh, and it's more interactive and it's excellent for a learning environment. Um, it encourages, jamming encourages individual creativity and leadership as well within the uh, styles. Um, and jamming also tends to encourage practicing. Uh, students try out new things in a new genre and they are encouraged to go home and work on these skills that they haven't been able to use before. Speaking of working with guest artists, this can be a great way to learn about new styles of music if you're not an expert in them. Um, which guest artists you work with is a big question. I'd encourage you to try to work with the uh, most well-known guest artists in your area um, and don't be afraid to ask them. The worst that they can say is no. In fact, you'll often be surprised at how 
um, willing uh, guest artists are to work for very little money in order to share their music with their student, with your students. They really enjoy um, sharing that music and new knowledge, particularly if students have never heard about the style. Of course, this does also require us teachers to relinquish the control in the classroom and be a learning participant along with them. But you aren't giving up your only role because the guest artists often do not have knowledge of students learning or um, what they're capable of technique-wise. That's your role as a teacher to facilitate that. So it's a, a, a very um, you know, symbiotic relationship between the guest artist, the teacher, and the students. One concern people have about performing other styles of music is they're worried of what it might do to the student's ability to perform classic repertoire or classical technique. But I would argue that more is more in this case and not less. Uh, in other words, learning uh, to play jazz on a violin will not diminish a student's ability to play classical music on the violin. In fact, if anything, it will enhance their ability to play classical music because they will learn new techniques, new approaches to performing music. In particular, uh, improvising and composing music leads to a deeper understanding of the differences between the styles and allows the students to do more in both cases. Um, so uh, learning in multiple styles can enhance the ability to perform uh, in all the styles. When exploring a new style of music, uh, I encourage you to choose good tunes. In other words, choose those tunes that are um, a representative of the style um, and tunes that are commonly found or styles that are commonly found, like certain dance styles are inherent to certain styles of music. Um, the uh, songs that you choose for the students to perform uh, will represent your curricular choices for that uh, unit that you're teaching them, so you want to think carefully about that. The best pieces to choose in the style are the ones that the expert players are probably most tired of performing. But since your students are unfamiliar with the style, these are the best tunes to start with because they're the ones that will give a broad overview of the style before they get into more complex or esoteric songs. And you also, along with the learning in the classroom, you want to uh, encourage observing live performances, listening to audio and video recordings, watching video recordings, uh, and using it in your teaching as well so they hear the styles being played authentically. The other thing, uh, you cannot teach everything about any one style. But the great thing about this is it will leave your students wanting to learn more about these styles. So if you give a really nice introduction uh, unit with your students in a particular style, often this will lead them to explore the style more beyond the classroom. They'll, you'll be surprised actually at how your students will become experts in some of these styles that they hadn't even heard about uh, before until you introduced it in your classroom. You can encourage them to do this by encouraging them to take private lessons on, uh, instru on other instruments uh, that are inherent in that style. In other words, a violinist can take lessons from a jazz saxophone player and learn about the genre without worrying about the technique. You should also encourage them to um, attend concerts uh, and attend jam sessions when they're available in your area. Uh, if you'll find by encouraging this that students will often seek out more knowledge and experience uh, after your initiation of the, of the style. So to wrap up, uh, I'd like to encourage you to explore different styles of music within your traditional uh, instrumental ensembles. Uh, you should choose styles that uh, are meaningful to you or are meaningful to your students or your community. Uh, you uh, should start small, choose one style that you're interested in exploring. This is a process that takes time to learn about it, but learning along with the students will be beneficial to you and the students. Um, sh these shared musical experiences will help your students become part of a community of creative musicians and they will in turn influence their musical participation both in their future and in future generations as well. Thank you.